Next question is from Connor Sherry. What are the best snacks and quick foods to eat for hard gainers trying to pack in extra calories, specifically protein? I want to address the snack word because it's been a while on the podcast. I used to tell clients there's no such thing as snacks. There's only complete meals and incomplete meals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like one of the most common questions that we get about like in... And the reason why I used to teach this to clients is because I just think it's a it's a bad habit to get into trying to figure out what's a good <clears throat> snack or a bad snack. It's better to look at every time you eat, it is a meal, and is it complete or is it incomplete? Because it's very hard to hit all your macronutrient targets, regardless if you're trying to build or you're trying to lose, and you're doing it through these snacks all day long. Mm -hmm. It's just way, it's much easier to look at the time you're about to eat. And you're also far better off resisting eating some food for that, you know, to hold you over until that right. next meal, resisting eating that and having a bigger, fuller, uh, complete meal than to have all these little snacks. Not to mention uh, that category of food, usually yes. like, what are you going to get That's or right. that category. So yeah. like, well, let's just eliminate that category and focus on the meals. And then, you know, the spillover of like, I didn't get enough protein. How am I going to do this? Maybe that's where uh, an opportunity lies in finding a snack that has more protein. I would. So if I had a client, well, what about like fruit, like an apple or something, right? Okay, well, that's fine. It's not bad. But if I, if you're going to eat, so let's say an apple on average is about 150 calories or so, unless it's like a giant one, you know, let's say about 150, 200 calories. I would much rather see 99.9% .9 of my clients not eat the apple and eat three more ounces of the chicken breast at dinner sure. mm -hmm. or two more ounces of the steak that they're about to eat because protein is much harder for them to get. And a lot of times they fill up on carbohydrates and that's part of the reason that doesn't allow them to hit their protein targets. I would much rather see my client resist the snack and then have a, a bigger, more complete yeah. meal. When, when your challenge is getting in enough calories and i know some people watching are like oh i hate those people but it, it, this can be a challenge for some people is getting in enough calories to get to their muscle building or weight gain goals that can actually be very difficult the things you want to look at are calorie density and uh digestibility because those are the things that will get in your way like is this food something that i can easily eat and then is it okay and easy for me to digest because if you eat the wrong foods Either you waste your time eating a big meal because the calories are too low, or you eat food that makes you feel bloated, and then you're screwed for the next meal. Now, I have some staple bulking foods that I would eat that were just super effective for me at packing on size. The, the, the most uh, impactful food was literally I would get 80% 80 lean, so 20% fat, ground beef, and I would have that with white rice. So I'd mix that with white rice, and I would make the white rice with bone broth. And that would be a bowl that was 1,200 calories, 60 grams of protein. There was some good carbohydrates in there. It was very easy for me to digest. It was a very easy bulking meal for me, inexpensive. Ground beef is cheap. Uh, so is rice. So is bone broth. And then I throw in some vegetables on the side. But that was like, a, for me, that was a staple uh, weight gain food and one of the easier ones that I, I well, put together. And I'm going to push back on the continuing to, and you're naming a complete meal. That's so right. I'm going to, I'm going to keep pushing back on the snack thing of like, if you're a hard gainer and you struggle getting calories, be careful and weary of filling it up with, you know, nuts and carbs and snacks in between your meals. Go get what you need through whole foods and whole meals yeah. first. And then if you were a client of mine, that's a hard gainer. I might allow you to enjoy what the dessert at the end of the night looks like. If you still need calories, we've hit most of our, our our macronutrient targets. You just need more calories, some fillers. And then I like then I would prefer to use something like Magic Spoon. Go have a giant bowl of Magic Spoon at the end of the night where you get 40 grams of protein and you're not overloaded full of sugar and it tastes amazing. So, you know, pile that onto the end of the night if you need more calories. But what you don't want to get caught up is, oh, I have a hard time. I'm a hard gainer. And then you start to have all these snacks. I tried this, yeah. by the way, too. I, I cause th and this is where I'm I'm speaking from that. I'm speaking from being a hard gainer my whole life, trying to figure out the hacks to get the calories. And a mistake I made was thinking that this was a good hack. Like, oh, I'll start to carry. I'm sure you did this yeah. too. I'd carry peanuts in my pockets and I'd have- In all between these, meals, yeah. I'm yeah, just eating this. Yeah, we, I'd have a box of wheat thins I carried all the time. And I'd be, <laughs> I did all that bullshit. You know, and you actually, what you end up finding out is that you- if you even hit your calorie target, you fill it up full of crap and you don't hit the things that are most valuable like lean protein. And so, and that was just to get to your calories, right? So instead I would always coach my clients and this is myself also, 
get all what I need, like through these whole meals and a great choice, you know, some ground beef and rice is just easily digested. Yep. You can you keep piling it on. Well, do people add. associate like protein shakes in this category of snack? Cause I know there's a lot of eating a meal and then I did a workout, I get a shake yeah. and then I eat another meal and then I get a shake and then I go to bed and I get a shake. So, so my, my most valuable piece of advice when it comes to a hard gainer and how to use shakes in my experience, so this is my own personal experience um, that I found was I did like to do a shake right after my my workout because what I found was I could pound it really quick and then eat. in the car. By the time I got home, I was still hungry because I just had this intense workout. That shake had already digested it. It wasn't very much. I got my got my protein intake and then I'd sit down and eat a whole meal like that. I found so, so you can sneak in more calories that way yeah, if it's hard. That's, yeah, that's right. here's the second yeah. value with protein shakes is at the end of the day, when go. I look at all my calories and I go, oh man, I missed it by 50 grams of protein or by 500 calories. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make myself a, a shake, throw some bananas and peanut butter in there, blend it up, and now I made up for the difference. But it definitely- Those is, are the two ways I use yes, shakes. Exactly. Yes. But the goal, by the way, is always to get it through Whole Foods. Like, yes, yes. So my I set out every day with the intent to eat meals just like Sal just suggested, which I think is great, you know, or quinoa pasta and sweet potato yams. All those are great yeah. choices. And even if you're fine, if you don't, like gluten doesn't bother you, even regular pasta and potato, white potatoes, everybody th demonizes oh, yeah, potatoes it. Good. Yeah, but if you like that stuff, like eat that with your, your meats, hit your protein targets. If you're still struggling, then pile the shake on at the end of the night.